Today I'm gonna to do something a little different and tell you a real story of one of my personal IBS failures and how I turned it into an opportunity to learn something, so stay tuned. If you're new here, welcome. My name's Amanda Malachewski. I'm a certified functional nutrition health coach and a digestive and allergy detective. For weekly videos on how to find your personal diet and supplement plan for IBS and SIBO, please consider subscribing and be sure to click the bell to be notified when I post a new video every week. And just a quick heads up that if you're struggling with how to manage your IBS and SIBO symptoms for resolution, this is exactly the kind of thing I help my clients with inside my Calm Digestion Method program. So if that's something you need help with, be sure to head to the description box below this video to find out more about how to connect with me. All right, today we're gonna to talk about some of the embarrassing mistakes I've made in the past on my journey to try and make my gut feel better. You might think that because I'm a gut health coach who has helped hundreds of clients resolve their IBS or SIBO symptoms, um, that I would have all of this figured out and would be an expert at this for my own situation. But once upon a time, I was a patient just like you and I didn't know what the heck to do. <laughs> I was, and sometimes still am, as vulnerable as you to magic pill solutions and too good to be true offers on the quest to solve IBS problems. And I've made plenty of mistakes. So today I wanna to share one of my true IBS failure stories with you and also share how I turned that into an opportunity to understand what my body really needed to heal my IBS. And by the way, I'm gonna be doing a few more of these storytelling videos in the future. So if this is something you really enjoy, please consider subscribing so you don't miss any of the future videos. The first story that I wanna share is about a diet. And the story begins way back when my gut symptoms were just intermittent and they weren't very serious yet. I was a stressed out mom of two young kids. We had just finished building our house and I was about 10 pounds heavier than I wanted to be. So I was interested in losing a little bit of weight. And I'm not sure exactly how it happened, but I came upon this uh, health coach online who was promoting the ketogenic diet as a way to lose weight and do all kinds of other things. And in case you don't know what the ketogenic diet is, it's a very low carb, moderate protein, and very high fat diet. And the diet helps your body transition to subsisting on fat calories instead of carb calories. I think that I saw their ads on Facebook and started delving into their content. And I was really intrigued with what I was reading because they were promoting the diet as a way to manage all kinds of chronic health conditions. And they had these amazing testimonials from people who said things like, I haven't felt this good since I was in my 20s, or now that I'm in ketosis, I have boundless energy all day long, even though I'm 65 and I can do whatever I want. So on the basis of these testimonials and what this person was writing, I dove into the ketogenic diet 100% with no reservations and just went for it. I was already gluten-free, so I moved on to removing all grains, most starchy vegetables like potatoes and yams and winter squash, and fruit, I quit eating fruit. And then this particular keto advocate relies heavily on dairy products for the fat content of the diet in their recipes. Well, I've known for my whole adult life that I really don't tolerate dairy products that well, but I was under some sort of spell of like, well, if this person says this works, then I must be able to do this and I'm gonna try and do it. And for a little while after starting this diet, I actually did feel pretty good. I did find that I had extra energy. I did lose a little bit of weight, so I was doing pretty well. But then about two months into it, my skin started to break out my face. And I thought that this was probably because as I was burning fat, as I was losing weight, maybe I was releasing toxins or hormones or something that were stored in the fat. That was my hypothesis there. But then not too long after that, my period started to get really, really bad. Like I'm in so much pain, I can't do anything kind of bad. <laughs> and the bleeding got a little heavier. And I started having panic attacks and tremendous anxiety that was making it difficult for me to parent my kids. And I also started struggling with some pretty profound fatigue. Like I was on the couch and just felt like I couldn't get up half of the time. Like I really had to just lay down part of the day. And if you have small kids, you know that chasing around a two-year-old and a six-year-old is kind of challenging if you're dealing with that kind of fatigue. And then something else that started happening was my digestive system started to have a lot more problems. I was seeing diarrhea and constipation, so kind of a mixed IBS situation. And this was new. My intermittent digestive problems became more consistent and chronic and frequent. And they were going right along with all of these cycle problems as well. 
And with all of these symptoms, it really felt like I was on a roller coaster every day of like, when I woke up in the morning, I never knew what was going to be waiting for me symptomatically. Like I didn't know if I was going to have a good day and could just do my life normally, or if I was going to have all kinds of symptoms and need to be like on the couch or in bed or just barely holding on parenting my kids. Now at this point, I started to do even more food investigation and dive into that question a lot more to try and figure out what was going on. But for the purpose of this story, I'm going to stop the narrative right here. So to summarize, I learned about the keto diet from some Facebook posts and on the recommendation of a health coach that I didn't know and their testimonials from their clients, I made a complete diet overhaul without any attention paid to whether or not it was appropriate for me or not. And within two months, my symptoms got a lot worse. So I wanna highlight three big mistakes that I made in this situation so I can hopefully save you the same kind of trouble. Number one, I was swayed to the keto diet by some Facebook posts and some testimonials from a health coach that I didn't even really know. (laughs) And their evangelical promotion was what drew me into this diet philosophy and made it seem like this was the only way to fix my health problems. The second big mistake I made was that I ignored what I already knew about my body, namely that I don't really tolerate dairy products and I reincorporated them heavily into my diet to bad effect. And three, I doggedly pursued this diet even after these symptoms started to arise because I had really bought into the theory of the diet. I really truly believed that this diet was the way to resolve my health challenges and I wasn't willing to see the reality of what was happening to my body. I believed that carbs were bad for me and that I couldn't go back to eating carbs because it would cause all of these chronic health problems for me in the long term. So to get out of the situation, I had to do a couple of different things and eventually I came around to figure this out. Number one, I gave up dairy again, which greatly improved my symptoms. I also had to give up sugar alcohols, which are a common sugar substitute in the keto diet, things like xylitol and erythritol, which are helpful because they can help you get off sugar, but they are high FODMAP foods and were likely contributing to my IBS symptoms. I also had to begin to add some carbs back into my diet. And you know what? The sky didn't fall and I maintained my weight. I didn't have any significant problems from that and it greatly relieved my fatigue. I literally just didn't have enough carbohydrates to fuel my body and my unique needs. Now there's certain benefits to the keto diet and I wouldn't you know, say that there's no benefits to it or that people shouldn't use it. It's just that it wasn't appropriate for me at that time and place in my life and I used it inappropriately. So my take home message here is to be careful what you decide to take on, especially if you're just randomly encountering it on the internet. You really don't know whether that thing is appropriate right here and now for you. You can try it, but you have to take it on with the understanding that you're going to test it out for yourself to see if it really is right and appropriate for you. And I also think that this story highlights the risks of taking on dietary changes without the guidance and support of a seasoned professional. I know we all wanna save a buck or rely on what we find here on YouTube University, but the truth is is that sometimes we need a professional help or support person because it's really challenging to see for our own selves what's going on. And sometimes we need someone on the outside looking in who can guide us and give us direction. If I had to do this all over again, I would look at this as an experiment to be trying carefully just to see whether or not it was appropriate for me or not. And I would have readjusted the diet to suit my unique body rather than sticking to the textbook version that was good in theory, but not right for me. Have you made mistakes with your diet changes as you've been trying to heal your gut? Type yes in the comments if so, or tell me a little bit more about it in the comments. So if you feel like the dietary changes you're trying to work with are just not working for you, or you're just as confused as you've ever been about your diet as you're trying to improve your gut symptoms, I really wanna encourage you to download a free copy of my Roadmap to Gut Recovery Guide, which shares the exact strategy tools I teach my IBS and SIBO clients to help them find their personalized plan for calm digestion. You can grab a free copy of that guide by going to confluencenutrition.com forward slash roadmap. I will leave a link for that below this video in the description. It's also here on the screen. So make sure to grab that copy. All right. Let me know if this video was helpful by clicking like or leaving me a comment. And don't forget to subscribe if you don't want to miss any future videos. 
And next, I want you to check out this video that I made a while back called The Keto Diet for IBS, Good or Bad. Go ahead and check that out next. See you next time.